This video is about the dynamics of voltage gated sodium channel. The voltage gated sodium channel exists in three different states a closed state, an open state, and an inactivated state. From closed state to go to open state, it requires a change in membrane potential. It is whenever there is a depolarization in the membrane, it goes from closed state to open state. And immediately after opening, after 10 to 50 microseconds, it goes to a state called as inactivated state. From this inactivated state, to get opened again, it has to be closed first, then it can be opened again. For this inactivation to close change of state, again it requires a voltage change, that is the cell has to, membrane has to again repolarize for the voltage gated sodium channel to become closed again. So in this video, we are going to discuss the molecular mechanism behind how these three different states are changed. This is an alpha subunit of a voltage gated sodium channel and usually the voltage gated sodium channel has other subunits like beta and there are other regulatory proteins but this alpha subunit is the one which has the pore and which is the functional unit major important functional unit of the voltage gated sodium channel. So this is the phospholipid bilayer and this is a transmembrane domain protein domain and it is sh shown in three dimension and as a cross section image. And this two represents the pore through which the sodium ion has to pass through from outside to inside. And this is the three represents the selectivity filter which selects and allow only the sodium ion. And this four represents the diameter of the selectivity filter. And there are always site for phosphorylation by, by adding phosphate group to this place. The activity of the group, activity of the entire protein domain is modified. So let's take this three dimensional image and to stretch into a two dimensional image, this transmembrane protein domains. This alpha subunit has four transmembrane protein domains, one, two, and three, and four. You know, in the previous image, they all represented as a circular three dimensional image, but here you all represented a single linear image for identifying all the sub parts. The S4 of each transmembrane domain represents the, uh, you know, contains lot of positive charges which is going to act as a voltage sensor for this channel. So there is six transmembrane units, S1 to S6 in each protein domain and the S4 of all the four protein domains going to act as a voltage sensor. The S4 containing positive amino acids going to act as a voltage sensor. And between S5 and S6, there is a loop of protein which is called as P loop, which is present in all the subunits. This is going to contain the amino acids which are going to require for uh, going necessary for generating this selectivity filter. So the S4, the voltage sensor, and the P loop, the selectivity filter. P loop is between S5 and S6. And there is a uh, group of hydrophobic amino acids between the you know the S6 of third domain and S1 of domain 4. There is a group of amino acids, hydrophobic amino acids, we call it as IFMT domain or IFM domain. This IFM domain has affinity to bind to other hydrophobic amino acids like alanine, which is located in the S4 between the S4 and S5 loop of domain 3. And it is also, there is one more binding site for this IFMT domain that is asparagine between S4 and S5 of domain 4. Now, for clarity from next image onwards, there is only one domain which is going to be represented and all the uh, parts are going to be represented in this. So, this represents S1, S2, S3. This is S4 which is the... Um, voltage sensor this is s5 and s6 this this is the p loop between the s5 and s6 which is the selectivity filter and this is the ifm moiety which is present between s6 and s1 of uh, between 3 and the fourth domain the s6 of 
third domain and S1 of fourth domain. And this represents the alanine and the asparagin between the S4 and S5 moiety. And this is the voltage sensor. And this represents the activation gate that is when this is going to open it is going to open the pore which is going to allow the sodium channels inside now the channel is said to be in a you know, in a closed state this is a selectivity pore this is an activation gate and this is the inactivation gate and the membrane is now set the voltage gate ion channel is said to be in a state called as closed state now whenever there is a change in membrane potential normally it is negative charge inside and positive outside that is minus 70 millivolt it is going to be whenever there is a change that is positive charged amino acid increases inside that is in the beginning of depolarization this positive charged amino uh, charges inside going to push this positive charged s4 segment to outside okay like this so whenever there is a depolarization that is positive charge coming inside that is going to push the s4 segment going outside during this process this activation gate opens now the sodium ion is able to pass through the pore and the voltage gated channel is said to be in a state of open state but as i have mentioned above already that once this, this goes into open state immediately the ion channel is going to an inactivated state how does that happen these hydrophobic domains that is alanine in the s4 s between the s4 and s5 and the ifm yt are now going to attract each other so previously this activation gate is closing or it, it is in between the two so it is not going to bind now the both the hydrophobic domains are exposed and going to cause attract they are going to come together and bind so this is now causing the pore to get closed so this is called as inactivated state so now the activation gate is open but there is an inactivation gate which is closed this is the unique state called as inactivation gate now sodium cannot pass through from this state to go to closed state again it requires again a change in the membrane potential that is whenever again the cell comes back to the resting membrane state that is negative ions outside and positive again outside so this s4 domain is going to get attracted toward this negative charge and comes uh, uh, repelled by these positive charges it is going to come back and close the ion channel during this process it also detaches this hydrophobic interaction between this ifmyt the inactivation gate and this alanine in the s4s5 so this is now called as the closed state and the in summary from closed state to go to open state it requires a depolarization and this is sensed by the s4 segment which is present in all the protein domains from open to inactivated is by the inactivation gate which is the ifm yt going to bind to alanine which is present between the s4 and the s5 loop from inactivated to go to close again the membrane has to again repolarize the s4 has to come back in shape and the inactivation gate also now gets open so this is called as the closed state thank you